By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are going to have a look at the finals of the Timmy Talks Brawl Fest. I'm really excited to show this to you. 45 players started with this online tournament. Only two of them now remain. We've got Xander who's playing Tetsuo Umezawa and he is taking on Beastie Bus and he's playing Solkanar, the Swamp King. So that also means that both of these players are playing with similar color combinations. And if that means that they're also playing with the same cards, well, actually that is something that I'm gonna discuss in the deck deck. But before I jump to the deck deck, I would just like to point out that if you wanna skip the introduction, if you wanna go straight to the games, for example, please check the description below because there you can find several timestamps. One of them reads MTG games, click on there, boom, and you're right in the action. But also you can find timestamps to the deck deck. So if you want me, or if you, I should say, want to see a deck of uh, of boss first, just click on Solkanar Swamp King deck deck and that will take you straight to boss his deck where I'm gonna discuss all the ins and outs of his brew. So kind of by using the timestamps, you're the director of the video, you can decide what you watch when. Um, and one other thing, of course, that you can find in the description below is uh, an explanation of the rules. What is Brawl Old School all about? What cards are banned? Um, what commanders could you choose from according to our rule set? Check the description below for all that information. It's quite interesting if you enjoy this format. You can also find a playlist there where you can see all the match videos of this tournament. So it starts with the group stages all the way to this point, the finals. Okay, I've said enough, the introduction's done. Now we're gonna start with the deck decks and I'm actually gonna start with the deck of, let's start with the deck of Xandor. Let's take a look at his Tetsuo Umezawa build. And here we see the deck of Xandor and you probably recognize this deck because we also saw it in the semifinals. So I'm just gonna give a brief deck tech, just share with you what I noticed. So first off, the commander Tetsuo is a 3-3 three, three for three, which is huge. And it also has a really cool ability, one red, one blue, uh, two black and tap, and it can destroy target tap creature or target blocking creature. So it's kind of a better Royal Assassin, but the problem is you need all those mana. So I guess it's not really better than Royal Assassin, but you know what I mean? The ability is better, but you have to have the manas, you know, because it's 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 a high mana cost. Anyway, because he's playing with Tetsuo, he probably decided to put in kind of a tap theme in this deck as well. We see Icy Manipulator that can tap creatures down. We see Paralyze that can do the same thing. We also see um, a, uh, a Tonus's Coffin uh, that can do the same because when you put a creature in the coffin then untap the coffin, the creature actually comes out of the coffin tapped. So those are cards that he can use to make creatures of the opponent potential targets for the Tetsuo. Then another thing that I um, kind of notice when I'm looking at his creatures is that he's playing with a lot of flying creatures and he only has two creatures that don't have flying if I don't count his commander. And those two creatures are the often troll and the set troll and both of those creatures have regeneration. So he's really going for the flying evasion plan in combination with two really tough creatures to get rid of, you know, like an often troll and a set troll because of that regeneration. It can be super annoying to get rid of those creatures. So, you know, I hope for boss that he's playing with terror because they're great targets for terror because then you cannot regenerate. But, you know, besides that, they're kind of hard to get rid of. A bolt is not gonna do it. Um, combat damage is not gonna do it. So tough creatures to deal with. And then when we're looking at the rest of the deck, I just kind of see a lot of, you know, cards that you would expect here. Of course, you're gonna play with Fireball Disintegrate. You're gonna uh, play with your restricted cards, right? Your Brain Geyser, your Mind Twist, your Demonic Tutor. We see a Chaos Orb here. So there are not a lot of surprises, which of course makes sense when you reach the finals. You've probably built a very optimal deck, but there are actually two cards that I would like to highlight because I'm quite happy to see them in this deck. And that is Weakness and Immolation. Weakness is an enchant creature for one black that gives target creature minus two, minus one. And I think this, this card is a little bit underestimated. I mean, there are just a lot of creatures when you deduct two power and one power toughness from them that all of a sudden they're just not that threatening anymore. I mean, let's just take a general 4-4. Four, four. Old school is full of 4-4. Four, four. Suchi, super strong creature, but what if you put a weakness on it? I mean, all of a sudden it's a 2-3. It's like nothing. Juggernaut, maybe even a better example, you know? Um, also, it can make an Hypnotic Spectre into an O-1. Remember, Hippie needs to deal damage in order to force the opponent to discard. So a weakness can really take out a Hypnotic Spectre. And, 
you know, that's also where kind of the, this discussion comes in. Do you want to play weakness or terror? I think there are actually a lot of situations where a weakness is better than a terror. And I'm sure that people listening now think, yeah, but there are also a lot of moments where uh, paralyzed is even better than those two options. Also true, also true. I think Paralyze is a really good card as well. It's also in this deck. Immolation, interesting because it gives plus two, minus two. And uh, that means he can use it both ways. He can use it to, for example, make his Rock of Courageous a 5-1 flyer. If his opponent doesn't have flying, just deal five damage out of nowhere. But he can also use it to remove like two, two flyers. Like, for example, the Granite Gargoyle that he's playing, you know, that can be really difficult to get rid of. Uh, you know, playing Immolation and you kill it. You know, it doesn't matter if you have red open to pump it up into toughness because that minus two is permanent. So, um, yeah, those two cards really kind of stand out for me. I guess Detonate is also an interesting choice. Uh, one red and X from Antiquities. Um, the great thing about that is that it can destroy an artifact but also deal damage uh, to the opponent. So it's like a great target, for example, for a Jam Day Tome or an IC Manipulator because you get rid of a really powerful artifact and you deal four damage to your opponent as well. So it's kind of two cards uh, tucked in one. The big downside, of course, of this card is that it's sorcery speed. Um, okay, this is the deck of Xander. Like I said, I'm just going to keep it brief. So uh, this is his deck. If you want to know more about the ins and outs and you want to know more about my personal opinion about this deck, um, you can go back to the semifinal match where I extensively discuss Xander's deck. Beautiful deck, made it all the way to the final, so it's definitely a good build. Now let's go to the deck of his opponent, Beastie Boss. And here we see the deck of Beastie Boss. Now this deck was in episode four as well in the quarterfinals of this series. So um, again, I'm gonna keep it brief, but if you wanna know more about this deck, check out that quarterfinal match where I give some more ins and outs on the deck. Uh, just to give you a general idea, and I'm, I'm sure you can figure it out when you're looking at this, you know, Boss, he's not playing with a lot of creatures. There are some creatures in here, and you can see you really, you know, chose them to think, okay, I wanted to have added value. And that, there is one creature that, I guess, in that regard, surprises me a little bit, because Boss seems to go a little bit more for the value creatures than for, you know, trying to be really quick. So in that regard, I guess the Surrender of Freed surprises me a little bit. On the other hand, one blue and only two, and especially that one blue, I guess makes it really a good choice in this deck because it's easy to play. If you've got it in your, opener hand, in your opening hand, it can be a game. I mean, it can really get you ahead on life early on in the game. And just a 3-4 flyer for three mana is just huge in old school. It's just such a good creature. And also remember in this Brawl, you're probably not gonna run into a city in a bottle. That's just very unlikely. I don't think a lot of people play with it. So that kind of makes this random better as well in this in this format. I'm not surprised to see the two trolls in this deck as well. So Xandra's playing with them, but Boss as well. It's just so hard to kill them, which makes them quite valuable. They're great blockers because of that regeneration clause. And and yeah, you know, it's, it's just good value. They're, they're three mana each to cast, only one red, so you don't really have to go really deep into one color to be able to cast them, so I get it. And also the single ATOC in this deck, I think it's a really good decision because we kind of see a slight artifact theme in this deck and when we look at the the top uh, row there, we only see artifacts and we see uh, a lot of, well, not a lot, but we see some strong artifact creatures here. We see Triskelion, we see Jade Statue, we see Tetravus, we see Juggernaut. Um, you know, Juggernaut, interesting choice. I think maybe Boss, if you, because I know he doesn't have all his collection in Vietnam, so I think if he would have had his entire collection, perhaps he would have changed the Juggernaut for a Suchi. Maybe, Bus, it's nice if you could let us know in the comments below. I think a Suchi kind of fits his playstyle a little bit more because he seems to be more of a control player than an aggro player. On the other hand, what I really like about Juggernaut is it is a five power creature. So as if your opponent doesn't have an answer to Juggernaut, it's a real clock and it's a real problem for your opponent. Um, I haven't actually talked about the commander yet. So he's playing with Solkanar the Swamp King as his commander. So it's a 5-5 five, five for five. Those are really good stats, just like the Tetsuo. And um, also the nice thing about this card is it, it has Swamp Walk. And of course, Xander is playing with Swamps. So that could kind of make this a really annoying commander for Xander to play against. Another nice thing about this is uh, boss gains a life every time he casts a black spell or his opponent casts a black spell. And that can actually be decisive as well. Sometimes you just get that one point that you need 
to stay alive and win the game. I've, I've actually had that happen when I played with Sol Kanar in, the, in EDH. So I know that that ability is definitely worth checking out. Um, then I guess I want to mention the Abyss. The Abyss is something I talked about uh, when, men- when looking at this deck for the quarterfinal match. I think the Abyss is a card that Boss plays with a lot. It's, it's very, very strong. And it's going to be a huge problem for Xander. So if Boss can find that Abyss, it's going to be a huge problem. And remember, uh, both of these players are playing with Demonic Tutor. So that makes it, of course, I mean, I mean, it doubles the chance that you get to find the Silver Bullet in your deck. And I think the Abyss is definitely a Silver Bullet in this matchup. Okay, so this is the deck of Beastie Boss. We've looked at the deck of Xander. That means we're ready for the finals. I'm really excited. At the end of this video, we will know... Who has won the Timmy Talks Brawl Fest? Here we go! Game number one is about to begin here. We see Xander on the left with Tetsuo and Boss on the right with Sulkanar. So Xander starting here with a basic swamp. Let's see what Boss is going to bring us. That looks like an underground sea. And as you can see, I've put the um, cards on the screen here for you because I do realize that the quality is not the greatest. Something went wrong with the recording here, so that's why I'm kind of helping you by showing the card here. We just saw Boss, by the way, casting an Ancestral Recall. Uh, maybe it's nice to note that Xander is playing fully underpowered, so there's no power in his deck. Boss does have access to the Moxon and the Blue Power. He's playing with Recall, Time Walk, and with uh, Time Twister. And there we see a Mishra's Factory so he could start swinging in next turn. Let's see if he wants to play something out going through the cards. Looks like he's a little bit unsure what to do. Sorting his hand and oh, he has to discard. That's why it's taken him so long. And I think, I'm not sure what card this is. Could be a terror there in the bin. So that kind of explains why it's taking him so long. I thought, is he doubting about what to play out? And that seems to be a basic swamp. So he's discarding two cards there. That's, of course, the result of that Ancestral Recall. There we see an early cast of Tetsuo Umezawa. And, of course, that's what you want to do when you're Xander. Get your 3-3 commander out on turn number three. You're finding that Batlands that gives him the ability to cast it. And now it's on to Bust to see if he has an answer. Of course, he can block on the Mistress Factory uh, next turn because he can uh, the Mishra's Factory can pump itself so he could trade he's playing a basic Mountaineer there's a Chain Lightning okay taking care of Tetsuo Umezawa and you see it gets a counter that that means that if Xander wants to recast it he has to pay two extra and there we see an attack by the Mishra's Factory as well so Xander is going to drop to 18 here and we see Boss is still on 20 by the way didn't take any damage yet there we see Xander playing Island number two and tapping three and there is the often troll a two two and one red to regenerate and of course he doesn't have any regeneration ma uh, mana open at the moment so if boss can find a lightning bolt for example he can uh, kill the often troll now here we see a strip mine he could consider stripping the batlands yeah that's exactly what he does because that means that xander doesn't have any access to red anymore and he doesn't have double black and now he's tapping three. What is he going to cast here? Cyblast perhaps on the troll? A Stone Rain. Okay. And interesting enough, he's going for blue. I kind of would have thought he would go for black because that would uh, take out another color for Xander. I guess this was the right decision because Xander had another Swamp in hand. Passing turn here. I'm a little bit surprised that he's not attacking with the troll. I guess he wants to have it on blocking duty since he's lower on life. And then he can trade it for the factory if Boss wants to attack with the factory. Let's see what he can do. Does he have a land in hand? I mean, he discarded a basic swamp earlier. And of course, he had that strip mine. Looks like he is animating it. No, he's not. Okay, so oh, he's animating it so he can copy it with copy artifact. So that means he's got two Mishra's factories using the mana from the Mishra's factory to cast a black vice. We can see that Xandra's got five cards in hand. That means he's going to take one damage from the vice next turn. And uh, it's pretty cool. You can copy the um, Mishra's Factory, but you have to animate it first because then it's a 2-2 artifact creature. The interesting thing is when you copy it, it actually comes into play as a, as a land. So you can tap it immediately to give you a mana because it's not copied 
as a creature, so it doesn't have summoning sickness. So it's pretty. It's a pretty unique card, Mishra's, uh, Mishra's Factory, and I guess copy artifact as well. So passing turn here, we see Xander dropping to 17 because of the vice. And let's see what else he can do here. Going through his cards, I have to say at times the connection was a little bit unstable, so there could be some little cuts in this video, but I'll talk you through it. Uh, through it. Don't worry. For example, now we see Xander's hands. <laughs> It seems to be pretty frozen, but Boss's uh, screen is working just fine. He's tapping a mountain and his underground sea and a Mishra's factory. And what's he? What is he going to cast here? Looking at his hand, and there's a Surrendip Afrit, one blue and two for a three-four flying powerhouse from the uh, Arabian Nights expansion. It will give Boss one damage during the upkeep, but that's a small price to pay for a three-four flyer. And it looks like Sander is back again. And he's taking another damage from the Vice. Still at five cards in hand. So he's dropping to 16. And what is he going to do next? He still needs a Mountain. And then he can recast Tetsuo. Oh, a Paralyze. Very good player. So that's going to tap down that Surrendip. And we also see a Factory. And again, not an attack by the Often Troll. Now I am a little bit surprised because he could have attacked for two, the Mishra's Factory was tapped, and he could have used his Mace to send back the Factory. So I kind of feel that Xander kind of left two damage open here, and you never know if that comes in handy later in the game. There we see Boss tapping four, five, and he's gonna cast his commander, Solkanar the Swamp King, a five, five with Swamp Walk, and I guess that Xander is really, really happy that he's got that Maze of If that he can use to send back that Solkanar. Because remember, Xander has swamps, so the Solkanar is unblockable. There is another swamp, by the way, by Xander. Cannot find any red mana. And there's an Air Elemental, 4-4 Flying Creature. Beautiful art by Richard Thomas. And uh, he can start swinging in. And maybe you're wondering, is the entire deck of Xander black bordered? I wish it was. I think it's... Uh, or actually, I know he told me he's using those uh, sleeves where you kind of see that black bordered effect. And here we see Boss, he's gonna untap his Surrendip. He's gonna take a damage from the Surrendip, drop to 18. And I don't think it really pays off to attack here exactly. He's just passing turn. That Maze of If is making it difficult for Boss, or else he could have attacked with the Solkanar. Let's see what Xander can do here. Finding another Swamp. He's very unlucky in the Mountain Department. Because besides the Badlands, he hasn't drawn into a single red source. And there is a Mind Twist. Oh! So now forcing Boss to discard his hand. There we see a Triskelion, a Tetravis, a Shatter. And what's that? A Wheel of Fortune. Ah, that's so unfortunate. I love to see Wheel of Fortune. I'm not quite sure if it was, but I think so. And there we see an attack with a 4-4. Wonder if Boss is probably just going to take the damage here. He can jump, okay, he's deciding to jump, he thinks, you know what, it's not really useful and I don't want to take the damage. And at least he gets rid of the Paralyzed then as well. I, I understand why Boss is doing this. I mean, it saves you 4 damage plus the damage you would get from the Surrender itself, so it saves you 5 damage. It's not too bad, but it's looking really bad for Boss after that Mind Twist, of course. He's got 1 card in hand, Xander's got 2 cards, he's got the 4-4 four, four Flyer. I mean, he's got to get rid of that 4-4 Flyer. I guess that's really important. He could consider animating his factory, attacking with both. Oh, he's just going to attack with everything now. And uh, that's also because, of course, Xander only has that off control. And remember, he cannot regenerate it. So he's probably just going to take 4. Or is he going to trade? I guess he could trade as well. It's not too bad. Yeah, he's going to trade. Okay, so losing the off control, taking 2 damage, going to drop to 14. I mean, this makes perfect sense from Boss's perspective, but if you're Xander, you're not really worried about this. I mean, he can still swing in for four, exactly, so Boss is going to drop to 14. There we see Xander, and he's casting Azur Drake, and that's a great blocker for the factory, and also just another creature through the air, 2-4. And remember, Xander's deck is full of flying creatures. He's got Rock of Courageous, Phantom Monster, the Flyers he's got on the board, so he's, he really went into the Flyers. There's a Recall, and he's going to Recall for one here, taking away the Island. And what is he going to pick up? There's quite a lot in, in his graveyard, but is there anything really useful? 
Perhaps a stone rain on the Mace of If, because then he can swing in and at least deal 5. We see Xander is on 14, that would mean he would drop to 9. There's a strip mine, of course, better than the stone rain. So strip mine stripping the Maze of If, exactly. Swinging in with Solkanar the Swamp King. There we saw a small glitch on the line, by the way. But it doesn't matter, we haven't missed much. Xander is on 9. He's going to untap, attack for 6. Bus going to drop to 9 as well, or, or to 10. Oh, 8 even. Okay, dropping to 8. There we see a weakness. And the weakness I discussed in the deck deck, it's really cool to see cards like this in the final. It does mean that Bus is going to gain a life from the weakness because of his Soul Canar, the Swamp King. So he's actually going to go up in life, going to go to 9. But that Soul Canar is now a 3-4 creature. And it's just not as impressive as a 5-5. Five five. And he's going to animate, so he's going to swing in for 5. There we see a little glitch on the line again. And is he going to... He's going to drop to four. Oh, this is such a close game. I wonder what Xander is going to do. Maybe he needs to keep his flying army untapped. And I wonder if Xander, you know, maybe forgot about the Mistress Factory. So he's just going to attack you with the Air Elemental. So we see Boss dropping to five. There's an Icy Manipulator. This is really good news here for, for Xander. Because now he can tap down the Solkanar, the Swamp King. And then, of course, he can block the Mistress Factory on the Azur Drake. So things are looking really good for Xander. But if Bus can, for example, find some uh, direct damage, he can still win this game. And Bus still has the Underground Sea, so he has access. Ooh, there's a Chaos Orb. This is such an exciting game. He's going to flip. Is he going to flip on... And there, of course, we see an activation on the Icy. A nice thing to know about Chaos Orb, when you activate it, your opponent has a chance to respond, but you don't have to say what you're going to target. So your opponent has to make that decision without knowing the target. So there, we're going to see the flip. There's a glitch on the line or not. Oh, it's a very shaky connection here. There we see the card hanging in midair. I think it missed. Did it miss? I mean, look at the board of Xander. It's intact. And I guess he was aiming for the air elemental because he needed to aim for that to stay alive. Yes, he missed. And that probably means that Xander is going to take the victory. Here. He's going to fly over to Mishra's factory. That's the only possible blocker. Yep, that's it. So game number one, a win here for Xander. Oh, and what if Bus would have made that flip? It's always going to be an if. Anyway, Xander winning game number one. Game number two, here we go. One up for Xandor. And let's see what Bus can do on the play because of that loss. Starting with an Ivory Tower, and I think that's an Underground Sea again. So he's got five cards in hand still. And passing turn here to Xandor. Xandor starting with a Mana Vault. So he's ramping up. So maybe next turn he could play Sengir if he can find another black. It's a possibility. We see Bus going up one life, by the way, because of that Ivory Tower going to 21. Let's see what else he can do. There is a Mox Ruby and a basic mountain tapping three. Ooh, a Surrender Pafrit. What a good start here for Beastie Boss. So he can swing in for three next turn. There we see Xander playing an island. I wonder, I wonder, what is he gonna play? Maybe nothing. It looks like he's in the tank, I guess. Does he have an option? Maybe he's doubting, like, do I really want to tap down my Mana Vault for whatever it is that he can do? And nope, he's just passing turn. Oh, and then he's playing a Psionic Blast in the upkeep of Bus, making sure that Bus still takes the damage, destroying... That Surrender Pafrit, and that of course is a good decision because you don't want to get all that damage from a 3-4 flyer so early on in the game. And there is a tap 3, Wheel of Fortune! I love it! And it also goes really well with the Ivory Tower of Boss, by the way. Look at that, Boss is throwing away his Disintegrate. And let's see, just a lot of lands gone for Xandor. And you may think, okay, so it doesn't really matter that much for Xandor. But on the other hand, what if he doesn't find any lands now? in his fresh seven. I know it's unlikely, but still. And let's see what Boss can do with his new hand. Finding a black vice ideal here. 
So that means Xander's gonna take three damage and a damage from the Volt, so four damage down. That's actually pretty steep, dropping to 14. And maybe that Mana Volt is gonna work against Xander here. He's playing Hammerheim, which is actually pretty good against Solkonar because it can remove Landwalk abilities. And now he can cast Tetsuo, I guess. That's one of the options that he has. But I'm sure he prefers to just emptying his hand, but that all depends. Screen seems to be frozen, by the way. So we'll just have to be a little bit patient while Boss is already taking his turn. He's gonna gain some life from the Ivory Tower. Gonna go up to 22. And okay, there, Xander is back. Oh, he did a lot. So it looks like he's played a Soul Ring and a Chaos Orb there. Interesting that he didn't tap the Soul Ring to cast the Chaos Orb, by the way. That kind of surprises me. I would have expected him to pay one for Soul Ring, tap Soul Ring for Chaos Orb. Maybe he had his reasons. Let's first see what Boss is going to do now. It's always kind of annoying to play against the Chaos Orb. What I, what I try to do when I'm playing against the Chaos Orb is basically trying to force my opponent to just use the Chaos Orb as fast as he can. When I've got a deck with, for example, Shatter or Disenchant, it's a different story. Then I'm going to try to draw into those answers as soon as I can. Because remember, with Chaos Orb, you can respond to the trigger. So your opponent's going to say, okay, I'm going to pay one, I'm going to tap, and I'm going to use it. And then you can respond by saying, okay, I'm going to... In response, I'm going to disenchant it or shatter it. So if you've got some kind of artifact destruction, it's a great way to then just keep it on hand and wait for your opponent to use uh, his or her Chaos Orb. Anyway, um, let's see what Boss is going to do. Four mana available. Asking about the Graveyard of Xandor here. Tapping three. And okay, there's a Stone Rain. And he's going to take care of the Hammerheim, probably because Hammerheim can get rid of the Landwalk ability. And it looks like Sander at least is going to take another damage from the Volt and another damage from the Vice. It looks like his hand count is 5 at the moment, looking at that green dice. Yeah, so he's taking 2 damage in total, going to drop to 13. And things are looking okay-ish for Boss. They're not looking great, but not looking bad either. I mean, he is managing to kind of deal damage to Xander without really doing that much himself. And he's actually going to drop to 12. There we see an Ancestral Recall by Boss. Yeah, and power, of course, is really something that when you're kind of stuck, can get you out of a difficult point in the game. And now we see Xander casting a Jam Day Tome. So that is a really nice card for Xander. On the other hand, he does have that Black Vice. Four cards in hand now, so he's not taking any damage from the Vice. Boss, of course, having a lot of cards in hand after that Ancestral Recall. Does he have something to do? Playing out a land first, a basic mountain. Is he going to play something out to kind of seduce Xander to use that Chaos Orb? That's kind of what I'm expecting. Maybe he's playing out like a creature that's not great, but also a little threat. What he could do is, uh, of course, as well, is cast his Soul Canard, the Swamp King. That's also a nice way to kind of lure Xander into using the Chaos Orb. I am expecting him to do something. I, I cannot imagine him doing nothing unless he's got a really good instant option in his hand that he kind of wants to keep his mana open for. But I wouldn't know which one, thinking about his deck. Tapping two here, the Ruby and the Basic Mountain playing a Chaos Orb of his own. Okay, that is interesting. So both players have a Chaos Orb right now on the board. And we see a Copy Artifact. So he's asking, can I, can I play this? Do you want to respond to me casting the Copy Artifact? And let's see if Xander wants to respond. So I guess if Xander's not going to flip... He's going to copy the Chaos Orb. I wonder, it looks like he's allowed to. So now he's copying the Chaos Orb. So all of a sudden, Boss has two Chaos Orbs and Xander only has one. And now the next question is who's going to activate it first? It's like the Wild West. It's like one of those stare downs. I wonder if he's going to activate it. Or if he just passes turn. It looks like he's passing turn. So now Xander's going to uh, untap his mana vault. 
Not taking any damage from the vice, of course, because he was on four cards. And they're playing a maze of if. That could be a good target for one of the Chaos Orbs. Boss is going to untap, so not using that one Swamp to flip his orb. He's going to go up in life again. Look at his life total. He's on 28 right now. That is really good. Playing out a bad lance. And he probably doesn't want to play out too much. He just wants to keep gaining life. And I guess he, there's no really immediate need for him to use his Chaos Orb. What he could do, of course, is use Chaos Orb on Mesa Viv if he is successful. Remember, he missed a flip in, in game one. If he's successful, then cast Sulkanar the Swamp King. That could be a line of play. Because then if Xander chooses to use his Chaos Orb on the Sulkanar, the Sulkanar goes back to the command zone and Bus can recast it the next turn for seven. He's got six mana sources now, so if he can just play a land out next turn. And I think he's just activated one of his Chaos Orbs because he's played the mana. Yep, here we go. Is he going to target the Chaos Orb? Yeah, he's targeted the Chaos Orb and not the Maze of Ifs, so choosing another line of play. And now I'm expecting him to cast that Sulkanar, to be honest, and then use the Chaos Orb next turn to get rid of the Maze of If. Or does he have a better option in hand? Tapping four, it seems. So I guess he's got a better option. Playing a Juggernaut. Okay, that is pretty good. That means that on the end step of Xander, he could use his Chaos Orb to flip on the maze and then attack with the Juggernaut, deal five damage. And remember, Xander is already on 12. Boss needs to win this or else he's out of it. And Xander wins the Timmy Talks Brawl Fest. So this is going to be an important turn for Xander. He knows, of course, that Boss is probably going to target the maze. So he has to find an answer for the Juggernaut. He still has a gem day tome to kind of dig further, but that is going to cost him four mana. He's deciding not to. He has a better option in the form of Sengir Vampire, 4-4 four, four flying creature. And I'm expecting Boss to still to flip here and then trade his Juggernaut for the Sengir, which is not a bad trade. So he is going to flip, it seems, using the Batlands there as the mana. And there we see Maze of If is the chosen target. Is he going to hit it? Yep, he's going to hit it now. So no more misses after that uh, game one. Both hits are on target. Mesa Viv's gone. I'm expecting a trade. Or does Boss have something to get rid of the Sengir Vampire? And things are just looking really good for Boss. He still has more cards in hand. He's got a lot of mana. He's gaining tons and tons of life of his Ivory Tower. Unfortunately, we see another freeze here. Bye, boss. So we'll just have to wait until he gets back. Yep. Oh, a time walk. To make matters worse, a fireball on the Sengir Vampire. Wow. These are two great moments for boss that will probably give him the vic victory here. Xander is going to drop to seven. Remember, exactly. He's taking his extra turn with the time walk. He's going to swing in probably again. Xander is going to drop to two. Can Boss already finish it or is he going to give Xander one last turn? Look at all the mana that Boss still has. Tapping there his Mox. Untapping it again. Tapping it again. He's, he's really not sure what he wants to do here. I, I guess he doesn't want to give... Xander another turn. Tapping three. Are we going to see a Psyblast? I guess if he had a Psyblast, he would have played it already. Maybe it's a draw seven. I, I don't think you want to do that when you're bust. You don't want to... I mean, look at the hand size. Well, Xander's got four in hand. I guess you do want to do that, of course, because you've got device. Is there going to be a draw seven? It looks like bus is... He's kind of stuck at the moment. Okay, now he untapped, taps again. Ooh, this is really annoying having these freeze frames at the moment when we're so close to the end of game number two. But it is what it is, I'm afraid. Remember, Bus is playing all the way from Vietnam, so connections are kind of shaky. Tapping five here. Okay, he's just recasting Solkanar. I was thinking maybe Wheel, Time Twister, uh, 
Sayani Blast just to finish Xander off, but it looks like Xander is getting one last turn. And nope, that's it. Not finding what he needs to find. And that means that Boss is winning game number two. And that means it's a 1-1. One, one. Game number three, the decider. Here we go. I love it when the finals goes to three games. That's the way it should be. And it's still everybody's game. And Xander is on the play, of course, here. And oh, look at Boss. It seems like he's taken a double mulligan. Starting on five then in that case, that is huge. Is he going to start on four even? Is he going to lose another card? Let's wait and see. Still going through the motion here. It looks like he has to take away another card. That means he's taking a triple mulligan. Wow. That is actually making Sander a huge favorite because he's on the play as well. And I mean, if Boss is only starting with four, at least he's on the draw, which compensates it a little bit. I mean, if he can find like Ancestral Recall, then it's all good again, or kind of. But it's definitely a difficult spot to be in. Xandor, um they're playing just his second land. We see City of Brass by Boss. Xander here finding another swamp, not an, uh, a blue source, unfortunately, or else he could have cast his commander. Instead, he cast something that's actually similarly good as Setch Troll. And, oh, there was a glitch. I want to say, why is it going to the graveyard? But there was that uh, lightning bolt being played by Boss. So that does mean he's going to take a damage because he had to use his City of Brass to cast that. So he dropped to 18. Now he's going to drop, sorry, to 19. Now he's going to drop to 18. Casting a Wheel of Fortune. That is really good. Find that wheel after, you know, triple mulliganing, that is really good from Boss. And I guess, of course, when you're a Boss, you know I'm playing with Time Twister, Wheel of Fortune, Ancestral Recall, uh, Time Walk. So I have a few cards that I can compensate with uh, starting only with four cards. You're kind of hoping on finding those. And I guess, I guess Boss did. So he was able to... Uh, to draw that wheel, to draw into that Wheel of Fortune and cast it. So that means both players now just have seven cards in hand. And also for Xander, it's not too bad. It allows him to find an island. And oh, Mind Twist, that's dirty. Xander again finding a Mind Twist. This is the second time this game that he's Mind Twisting Boss. At least Boss gets to keep something. I mean, two cards, one card. He's got six in hand, Mind Twist for five. So just one card. Looks like they're going to throw the dice to decide what card he can keep. So it's card number... Oh, no. Okay. They're going to throw the dice to decide what he's going to discard. And uh, let's have a look. Okay. He gets to keep two cards at least. So we see Copy Artifact, Pestilence, and two lands going into the bin. Man, bad news for Boss here. Let's see what he can do. At least he's got four mana. If he can find mana number five, he can cast Solkanar. So he could cast Soul Corner now because of that City of Brass. That's going to give him red mana. Taking a damage, going to 17. And yeah, there's Soul Corner, the Swamp King again. And that's actually a problem here for, for Boss. But Boss still has a lot of cards in hand, of course. So very likely to have some kind of answer to the Soul Corner. One of the things, of course, he can do is play his own commander, Tetsuo. And remember, Tetsuo can kill tap creatures and blocking creatures. That is his ability. Tapping two, tapping three, tapping four. Still having mana open to play that Tetsuo. Are we going to see, I don't know, an Icy Manipulator perhaps? Okay, Taunus' Coffin. So Taunus' Coffin is also a great way to deal with creatures. He can pay three and tap it and put one of the creatures in the coffin. What then basically happens is the creature's exiled until the coffin gets untapped. And that means that if you're boss, you can also choose to put it back into the command zone. And Boss here is choosing to put it in the coffin, it seems. And there's a pass turn. So the coffin's being used. Commander's in there. Boss is playing a Badlands. Tapping. Four mana. What are we going to see? A Juggernaut. Okay. That's another problem for Xandor to deal with. I wonder if he's going to untap... The Tannis' Coffin. And there seems to be some static on the line again. So we're waiting for Xander here to be able to reply. Yep, he is back again, it seems. I can see a shadow. 
and he chooses to untap Thomas's coffin. That means that the creature that's in it, in this case the Soul Conar, comes back into play tapped. There is a Volcanic Island. Kind of expecting him to cast a Tetsuo now, or does he have a better option? He could cast Tetsuo and keep mana open to use his Taunus's Coffin. That could be a line of play here. It looks like he wants to keep 6 mana. Is he going to cast a Sheevan Dragon? He is playing with a copy of it. We haven't seen it yet. Would be really cool to see a Sheevan Dragon in the finals. Looks like he's still going through his hand. Not sure what to do. And there is a Felwar Stone. I'm a little bit surprised that he uses his herb work for the Felwar. There is an Earthquake. Okay, now I understand his decision. Earthquake for 5 means 5 damage to all players and all creatures without flying. And of course, Earthquake is really good at Xander's deck because he plays with regeneration creatures and flying creatures only. And this is a problem for Bus here. And he's dropping to 12, losing two creatures. And of course, his Sulkanar is going back to the command zone. And Xander still has that Taunus' coffin. I guess when you're Bus, you want to try to recast your Sulkanar, but you need seven mana and he's only got six. Two cards in hand, passing turn here. So things are really looking good for Xander. And yep, he's casting his Tetsuo Umezawa. So next turn he can start swinging in for some damage with the Tetsuo and there is a Demonic Tutor to make matters worse. Now remember, Xander is not playing with power or else he would have probably looked up an Ancestral Recall. One of the options that he does have is looking up a Brain Geyser. That would be really good because he's got tons and tons of mana. That would probably be my choice, but maybe I'm missing something. That could be the case. We'll just have to wait and see. If he's looked up a Brain Geyser, he's probably going to pass and then wait to play the Brain Geyser the next turn because then he's got all his lands to his disposal again. He can just really refill his hand. Shuffling up here and putting it back. Tapping. Okay, there's an Icy Manipulator. Also a really good card, of course. Doesn't have mana left to use the Icy. There we see a Strip Mine. And it looks like he's going to tap four. Play a Navanor's Disc. That is a really good card right now. One Disc Activation could wipe out so many permanents on the side of Xandor. That is a really good card. Xandor would lose an Icy and a Tonus's Coffin. Those are huge artifacts. And, oh, a detonate here. Wow, that is really good. Getting rid of the Nevenerals Disc and dealing 4 damage in the process and attacking with the Tetsuo. That means that Boss is now dropping to 5 measly life. Is Xander gonna win? Is he gonna be the new Brawl Champion? The first Brawl Champion, I should say, here on Timmy Talks. There is a Chaos Orb making matters even worse for Boss here. Oh man, he needs a miracle. What he really needs is that Nevenerals disc, but it's gone. It's destroyed by the Detonate. Tapping three, are we going to see a draw seven? No, tapping four. There is a Disintegrate on the Tetsuo, so at least it's going to keep him alive a little bit longer. Is it solving any of his problems? Not really, but he's still alive. That's something. And when you're alive, I guess you can still win it. Just recasting that Tetsuo. He's got more than enough mana to pay the two extra. Just having to tap that single soul ring to do that. Using his Icy to tap down the city. And in response, Bus is destroying his own city of brass. Doesn't want to go down to three. And it makes sense, of course, because with four life, at least he still has two turns instead of one, playing a basic swamp. I mean, Bus is trying to hang in here. What can he do? I believe only two cards in hand, perhaps only one. It's hard to see. Only one, I guess. Tapping four. Okay, playing a greed. Yeah, that greed is one of the worst options. 
I mean, he can't really use it. Green, pay one, agreed, pay one black, draw a card, but you have to pay two life. And obviously, he doesn't want to go under four. And now he's on one, so the greed is absolutely useless. And a pass turn here. Last chance for boss, but I really don't see this happen, happening. What can he do? Nope, there's a recall. That's it. There's nothing he can do with that recall because he's got no cards in hand. So that recall, what a horrible top deck for you, boss. But let's focus here on the winner of the tournament. Xandor, congratulations with winning. And I'm actually really, really happy to see you win. You've done so well. Uh, we had a few of your matches before this final on the channel. And uh, yeah, you're a great patron to have. And uh, it's, it's a great victory, man. It's actually your second victory of a Timmy Talks tournament. So that's fantastic. And here we see the deck of Xandor, by the way. And uh, what's really nice to note here, it is a powerless deck in a field full of power decks, including my own deck. I was playing with power as well. So it's always nice to see that even though a deck has power, it doesn't mean it's gonna win every single match. That's just not the case. Sandor, congratulations. And I would also like to thank you for watching another episode right here on Timmy Talks. Please let me know in the comments below what your feelings are about Old School Brawl. Do you like it? Don't you like it? Do you prefer other formats instead, such as Singleton? Um, let me know in the comments below. Always interested to hear from you. And if you're new to the channel, welcome at Timmy Talks. Please consider subscribing and ring that bell. All that really helps. Talking about things that help, you can also become a patron of the channel. And how can you do that? It's quite simple. There's a link popping up right now, a little info card that's appearing. Click on the info card that will take you straight to Timmy Talks Patreon page. And there you can see how you can support Timmy Talks. It already starts with $1 a month. And the cool thing is you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. If you want, we can also play a game and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll. What end scroll? Well, the end scroll that's actually coming up right now. Let's go to the end scroll and take a look at the fantastic, amazing, wunderbar patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go. Ik het als fikker te samba kazee.